Hey everyone, it's your favorite voice actor from Ohio, Brian Von Vier, coming back at it again with another set of D&D stories. Today we've got a doozy again. What's the most memorable player character death that has occurred at your table? Part 2. Our party was fighting a dragon, a white dragon, in the mountains. But we had, like, overpowered powers, no ranged weapons, and I am the only one with magical weapons, so the DM gives him homebrew armor that makes him immune to non-magical weapons and kept us at a distance with magic ice that dealt 12d4 necrotic, so no one wanted to touch it. And so we are devising plans, but I decide to say, throw me, pulling out my three magical rapiers, but I proceed to die due to the poisoned ice the dragon also had after killing it. This character is revived only to see people die at his feet due to his weakness. Then he was blamed for his family's death, was near killed in the homebrew mind plane. Let's start with Grimsk's background. Grimsk was a human rogue whose parents were tragically murdered by a group with a phoenix symbol on their cloaks. So he swears that he will find and kill the people who wore the phoenix symbol, trusting nobody but himself and acting in low key. The classic vengeful guy background. In the first city, he was robbed by a bunch of kids he trusted and killed 15 people by burning down a tavern and getting arrested. After a few things, the party started an enormous travel to find a super powerful magic object. The party was composed by an elf ranger slash cleric, an elf sorcerer, and a dragonborn bard, the latter one with a cloak with the phoenix symbol. Even passing with her a couple of weeks, he never asked her anything. You have in front of you someone that has possibly a connection with the murder of your parents and you don't talk to her? I'm shy. I even asked to the bard player to talk to him often, so maybe he would say something and develop his character. Anyway, at almost the end of the travel, Grimsk found out that his parents faked their own death, hiring some actors with scenic costumes bought from the organization of the bard. His parents did it because they knew from a prophecy their son was intended to find that super powerful magic object. So they followed secretly the party for steal from them and gain immense power. In other words, his parents didn't love him and wanted to use him for their goals. After a few sessions, the party had to fight against a strong mage and two minions in a port on the ocean. The minions were taken out easily, but the mage was unharmed. Grimps decided to plate the mage and jump overboard in the deep water, while the cleric created a reel in the water, damaging both the mage and Grimsk. The mage succeeded to free himself after some attempts and get out of the reel, but Grimsk didn't. Even after the end of the reel, Grimsk couldn't emerge in time and drowned. The party members were still in fight with the mage, so nobody helped him. Even today, in every campaign my group and I do, all the NPCs know the story of the great Grimsk. The trustful untrustful, the tavern's pyromaniac, the shy unloved. When we name him, why raise our hands and hardly shout his name to the sky, where he's teaching the angels of every roleplay game how to swim. Maybe, as a DM, I had been rough with Grimsk's player, but now we laugh together about what happened. Not D&D, but Dark Heresy. I have been a DM for a few years in Dark Heresy and gained a reputation of player killer, so I have quite a few memorable PC deaths. I had Severus, a priest in my group that was a zealot. He loved cutting heretics with a chainsword and hated three things. Demons, mutants, and psychers, people with psychic powers. He once gets possessed by a demon. And when he was set free, he gains a mutation. I roll for mutation and he becomes a psyker. He puts a gun in his mouth and shot himself. I almost had a TPK once. Dorn, the techno priest in the group, had a grenade launcher with a shit ton of grenades. The boss shoot at him, critical hit. I roll for the critical hit. The bullet makes your ammo explode. He had 27 grenades. The sniper was the only survivor in the team. But I think the most memorable was Titus. Titus was a psyker, so he had psychic powers. And in Dark Heresy, using those powers can be dangerous because you can lose control and some random effect can appear. The party was in an auction sale where only illegal, dangerous, and cursed items were sold. At one point, the psyker decided to use a minor telekinesis power as a distraction. He failed horribly. He roll for a minor failure and get major failure. So he roll for major failure and gets one of the worst, mass possession. So now demons possess people around him. A lot of people had guns here. And in a few seconds, it was a total mess. Everybody's panicking and shooting at each other. Demons slaughter everyone in their range. The party managed to escape the room, except for Titus. He suddenly had a brilliant idea. He spot earlier a doll under a glass bell, and detected a massive demonic aura from the doll. 
He was trying to make a distraction to investigate the doll, and now that everyone is in full panic, he had his distraction. Now let me tell you, as a DM, I wanted to warn them with this demonic aura that they have to stay the f away from this doll. And in case of all hope were gone, they still could throw it at the opponent. But no. Titus decided he wanted to get the doll. By removing the glass bell, he freed a freaking powerful demon, not like those that were temporarily possessing people around, a ghost-like entity that could only be killed by psychic power. And this demon is now possessing the only psyker in the group. The rest of the party managed to escape an extremis. The mission was a total failure, but it was for sure an epic end for the mission. That should have been a lot longer. Okay, this is kinda cheating in the long run cause he wasn't a PC anymore. But in my first campaign I ran, a player realized that he didn't like playing a druid and wanted to try something else. So I allowed him to get a new character, as long as I could get the character for the future and that he wouldn't be able to change again. Around the same time, completely by coincidence, another player rolled a nat 20 to burn down a forest to distract a load of guards, the same forest that the druid was sworn to protect. I was so excited about the role playing, but this was something I could work with. So a few sessions later, Later, after the new ranger joined the party, an eco-terrorist group like the Red Lotus from LOK that the party had faced a few times had a new high-ranking member that totally exposed the party who was trying to infiltrate them. As they were running, the paladin used Misty Step to teleport right behind him. Now during this time, I was a new DM and me and the paladin's player had misread the rules of smites and thought he could stack multiple versions of smite at the same time. But looking back, I am so glad this happened. So I would have allowed it anyway cause I care more about story and characters than mechanics, so I admittedly rule of cool too much. So in a single attack, he killed the druid and caused a war between the city they were staying, the entire terrorist group. I may or may not have accidentally killed a teammate because I lost concentration on a fire elemental. This was my first campaign, and my rogue had an affinity with elemental gems. To her, they were her get out of jail free card. She would use them often in very hard battles as there were only four party members. Now, we had a guy who was notoriously unlucky in the campaign. He had already lost one of his characters who got downed constantly, and in a battle he got knocked out first. He was down to his final fail when I fell. Thus, my fire elemental I had summoned with the elemental gem ended up becoming our enemy. The DM rolled to see if it would hit me or the other player as the other two had fled the battle. Guess who it hit? The other player, killing him instantly. They still laugh about what happened to this day and I'm still mad at myself for causing another player to die. A second edition game. My first character in a large group. I'm playing a human paladin, since back then only humans could be paladins, joining a group of heroes as they are returning to a dungeon they've half explored. While we explore, going through the caves and up into a ruins uncovered, we go up a long sloped hallway. The floor is smooth, at a 25 degree angle, with occasional 5 foot gaps in the floor we have to either jump across or use a rope plus crampons to more easily traverse. We worry about the fall, but there's enough glow from bioluminescent mushrooms below to see the gaps would lead into a lake about 100 feet down. Survivable. We make our way to the top of the sloped hallway when we hear a click. The druid has stepped on a pressure plate, and as many of you have guessed, that's when the rolling pin-shaped cylindrical pillar drops from the ceiling in front of us and starts rolling down the hall. We flee back down the hall. The rogue fails some athletic rolls and gets crushed. Everyone else survives and gets to where the pillar won't reach, except for me. Now, you'd think it ends with me being crushed. Ha <laughs> nope. I fail a save to jump over one of the pits on the floor. Do I die from fall damage? <laughs> Close, but no. The pit sends me into a 100 foot drop down onto an underground lake. And as a paladin, <clears throat> I'm wearing plate mail. To add to the fun back in second edition, swimming was a skill. And if you didn't have any points in it, you couldn't swim. So I sank like a rock to the bottom. Then I drowned, I hear you say. No. The roller coaster continues. Oh, I like this. I managed to use a knife and cut myself free of my plate mail armor and manage a very difficult skill roll to swim to the surface. When I break the surface, I hear a growl behind me. And looking at me from the other side of the lake is six heads of a hydra that lives in it. 
I get eaten then. <laughs> no, I wasn't lawful stupid. I ran like heck before it could get me and hid in nearby caverns where it couldn't reach. I was down to three hit points and separated from the party. They had already cleared out this section of the caves, so I was relatively safe, but I didn't know my way back. Luckily, I had found a potion earlier that was supposed to be some kind of regeneration potion, so I drink it to restore health as I look for the party. Turns out, the potion regenerates hit points by polymorphing the drinker into a troll for eight hours. Sadly, no one in the party could speak troll, so when I finally do find the group, they see a big troll flailing its arms at them, and they set it on fire with arrows and spells. TLDR, Paladin survives Indiana Jones boulder trap, 100 foot falling into lake, drowning, Hydra attack, only to be accidentally PK'd by his own party. 5th edition homebrew setting. The party and I, level 9 dwarf forge domain cleric, were leading a rebellion against the queen who had gone mad. All was going well until our reconnaissance informed us that Lawrence the Pillager was on his way with an army of 300 men. Lawrence was known throughout the realm as a merciless killer who left none in his wake. He had single-handedly killed many of our NPCs over the last month and could probably take on our whole party by himself. We had three days to prepare. At that time, we could only must 60 soldiers without pulling troops from guarding an important stronghold that was under siege about a day's journey away. We marched towards a bridge that was the only crossing for an army of Lawrence's size on his current path, and started preparing. We built a wooden wall at our end and set up glyphs of warding on the other side of the bridge to blow it if worse came to worst. Seeing that our chances were slim, I devised a plan that was crazy enough that it just might work. As Lawrence's army approached, I stood in the middle of the bridge, with both hands on top of my shield, waiting. I called out, Lawrence! I was beginning to wonder if you'd come to your senses and realize you're no match for our grand army. Pity! I was hoping to be home tonight for the Wednesday night special at my tavern. But by the look of your hood, there may still be some hope. That seemed to have gotten his attention, and I called out a challenge to fight him in single combat. Losing side surrenders. The party at this point had no idea which scheme I had concocted, and realized I had just put all their characters on the chopping block as well. I prepared myself and rolled initiative. Luckily, the dice guns were on my side, and I just barely beat Lawrence's roll. I immediately used Contagion, a spell I had just gained access to. I roll to hit and roll a nat 20. For those who have never used Contagion before, on hit the target is poisoned. At the end of the target's turn, the creature must make a con saving throw. On three successes, the target is cured from the poison. But on three fails, the target is no longer poisoned, but instead falls infected with one of six diseases. Player's choice. Lawrence then attacked. He had three attacks with his enchanted glaive, but with the disadvantage only one hit. But that single blow was enough to do almost one-fourth of my total hit points. I knew I had to hold out just a little longer. Lawrence then failed his first save. As my turn came around, I then cast Bane on Lawrence to make his attacks even less likely to hit, while the con save became that much harder. Lawrence then let out another flurry of attacks, all missing. The other players were getting excited, maybe I had this all under control. Then Lawrence rolled his second save and failed again. This turn, I cast Spirit Guardians. Lawrence, undeterred by my magic, let out another flurry of attacks and managed to hit me with the crit, putting me down to just one more hit from his glaive. He then rolled and succeeded his con save. The next round, I braced myself by taking the dodge action, and the DM said that he would give double disadvantage to the first attack. The DM rolled the three dice for the first attack, 20, 20, one, and the next two attacks with regular disadvantage missed. That dodge really saved my bacon. Lawrence then rolled for his con save and succeeded again. Two successes and two fails. It all came down to the next roll, if I even survived the next onslaught of attacks. By Moradin's grace, Lawrence missed all of his attacks again, and then it came down to the final roll. The DM took a d20 and a d4 and rolled them in the middle of the table. My DC was 15, and as the dice came to a rest, it was an 18-4.
Lawrence bent over and started retching as his contagion transformed into the disease Slimy Doom. Every time Lawrence took damage, he was stunned until the end of its next turn. I had Spirit Guardians up, which is a 3d8 radiant damage, or half as much on a failed save every turn, within 15 feet of me for the next 9.5 minutes, or 95 turns. I punched him in the face. This is for Tom! I smashed him with the back of my battle axe. That was for Gast! I took my shield and knocked Lawrence to the ground. That was for Kill! Then, while both sides watched as the spirits of my dwarven ancestors held him to the ground, I yelled out, And this is for the Rebellion! As I cut Lawrence's head off. My side started cheering, and the players were losing it over how I had just bested one of our biggest enemies in a single combat that I should not have walked out from. The other army decided that instead of honoring our terms, they would charge our side of the bridge. But without their fearless leader and the glyphs of warding cutting off their retreat, we cut down the Queensmen and only suffered minor casualties. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was my most brutal kill. Hey everyone, it's your boy Brian Von Vier here. If you liked today's video, then leave a like, subscribe if you hadn't, and ring the bell to be notified when we post another vid. If you want to submit a story to us, you can always do so by joining our subreddit, r slash Mr. Ripper, and if you want to find some friends to play with, consider joining the Group Finder Discord we set up. Links are in the description below. Using a help action, you always come join my crew, <clears throat> the Brivers, over on YouTube and Twitter by searching up Brian Von VA. I stream games, make voice acting content, and voice your D&D characters in videos much like Mr. Ripper's channel. With that said, I just wanted to thank you, every single one of you, who enjoys our videos. Every day I hear that we're putting smiles on your faces during these tough times, and I'm glad we can get through them together. So please, from me to you, take care of yourselves out there. Make sure to call your family and friends to eat well, drink well, sleep well, and while you're at it, just give yourself the love you deserve. Everyone deserves self-love, you included. We'll see you later, everyone. Bye for now.